Hey everyone, I'm Steph Hoka, and today I'm very excited to be talking about WIND, a brand new series that's all about finding the magic within yourself. You see, in Pipetown, magical heritage is punishable by death. So a young boy named Wynn has to hide his identity, uh, even if that means he can't live a normal life. But when his secret is threatened, Wind and his friends will have to embark on a dangerous quest that's going to put them at the heart of a royal conspiracy beyond any of their imagination. I'm thrilled to be joined today by the creators of the series. We have James Tynan IV and Michael Thiele Nass. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Thanks for having us. I'm so excited. Congrats. Win number one launching today. That's very exciting news. It really is. And uh, I, I, you know, it, it's always a, a wild ride to, to bring a series to uh, market for the first time. And especially the wind has had a wilder ride than most. So I am very, very excited uh, to see this book finally in people's hands. And I, I'm just really, really excited and I hope they love it. Fantastic. Uh, well, <clears throat> inquiring minds want to know, when it comes to the secret origins of Wind, how did this story come about and what has it been like for the two of you to collaborate once again? Well, uh, this is honestly a story that I started coming up with when I was in high school. Uh, this was the book that I would, you know, write about and draw the characters of in the corners of my notebooks and throughout all of high school. So I have entire binders full of little sketches of all of these characters or, you know, the precursors to some of these characters. Uh, but this is, this is a story that's just been living in the back of my head for literally half my life. Um, and, you know, when Michael and I were finishing up with The Woods, uh, we knew that we wanted to work together again. Uh, and, you know, it, it took a few years <laughs> that, for, uh, for us to sort of <laughs> settle on what the, the, the size of the story that we wanted to tell and, and the feel of the book. Because, you know, The Woods had been uh, a more uh, science fiction story. Uh, we wanted to do some, and it was grounded a bit more in the real world. We wanted to do something a little different. And uh, I remember a few years ago, I was out at a convention in Greece, and I, and I pitched Michael Wind for the first time and laid out uh, the, the world as I saw it in my head. And immediately we were going back and forth and you know, some of the core elements of the series changed into what they are now uh, in those conversations. And really from that moment on, we've been working on WIN. Yeah, we literally didn't do anything at that convention other than brainstorming. It was just <laughs> sitting at the table, just exchanging sketches all the time. And uh, James, right now, what was most of the 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 world building aspect? If I remember correctly, yeah, it was good. The um, but yeah, like I, I'm just happy to be able to draw something that doesn't have much uh, realistic, you know, aspects to it. I just wanted to go crazy for a bit, do some fantasy, do some unique world building that would just you know let me you know do that do anything that i wanted and james let's had dive, a perfect script for me to work with fantastic let's dive into that a little bit when it comes to the world building uh this takes place in pipe town which to me feels like just as much a character as any of the actual characters in the story what were your influences for creating this world and its inhabitants I mean, this was this was really the heart of a lot of the conversations we were having uh, at that convention in Greece. Uh, this was uh, because you know the we're we're talking about a society that has walled itself off from the natural world. Um, all all water comes through pipes and canals in the city. There's no natural waterways. There's no natural uh, wildlife either. There, we, this isn't a place where uh, you know, even no, there's no grass, there are no trees, like, because any, any bit of the magical world, any bit of the natural world uh, is a place where magic can grow. And uh, in this world, magic is something that can transform you. It's something that can taint your body and twist you into something monstrous. And that terrifies the people of Pipetown. 
Uh, so we, we started talking about the sort of core feel of this, of this city. And uh, Michael started coming up with some of the ideas of how, you know, if there's no nature in the town, there would be murals of, that show the natural world on the walls of the, the city. And, you know, and, and also the idea that this would, wouldn't be a sort of just a basic, uh, you know, fantasy, medieval style fantasy town. We wanted it to have a much more robust, like we wanted it to, like, we wanted it to be filled with pipes. We wanted it to be something where the, the nature was so contained, but it also gave us a bit of a steampunk vibe where we were able to sort of, you know, like all electricity, everything, uh, all power in this whole little kingdom is operated through uh, pipelines and steam power and all of that stuff. So it's just like it, we, the world started building around there and it started becoming a more unique fantasy world. Well, the um, <clears throat> as James was saying, like the one of my one of the main drives, especially with with uh, Pipe Town, was to steer away from anything cliche. So we didn't want steampunk to be the vibe because that would have been a very easy route to go, and we've seen it a million times. So I basically wanted to do the draw what you know, and I used the, my hometown, which I grew half my life uh, up in. Half my life, I lived in this town in uh, Crete. It's an island between Africa and Greece. So I use that as a basis, as the feel of how the houses are just cobbled on top of each other, like a small town, but also it's a it's the main city type feel. And especially with the roots, I wanted them to be like the the, the roots. Sorry, the the pipes would be the roots of the city. So if we ever got to do more shots of how buildings just suddenly turn into pipes as they turn as they reach the bottom that would be the feeling like pipes and then they, the houses like growing out of them basically um but yeah but also i wanted to have that contemporary look of uh, give it a feel of now like street art um small vendors so it's basically a small town with lots of now elements but also uh, Eastern European but also steampunk. I don't know. I think that's the best way to do it. <laughs> well and I, I love how colorful it is too. It's not the slate gray of like you were saying James like a European uh, medieval kingdom or anything like that. It's teal and, and orange and peach and it's I love the colors in this. It's fantastic. Um, another thing I really love is the fashion that we get to see. Uh, I'm personally a huge fan of Wynn's mini cape. I love it. I want one for myself. Uh, when it comes to the fashion, all of the characters do have sort of a unique look. What would you say that their clothes say about the character themselves? Um, let's see. All right, let's leave Wind for last because Wind has the things that I just th I just thought that would stand out better on a main character feel to him like I wanted to have, for him to have black I wanted the star I wanted basically all right let's come back let's come back to this <laughs> his mini cape in my mind is night and day like the inside is like is the is is the daytime on the inside it gets blue and the outside is, is night so he's always covered in night because he doesn't know who he is yet. That was always my thoughts. I don't think I've ever told you this, James, but it's just something I was always just thinking while I was drawing it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted him to feel, you know, his tones or his pastel colors are all um, cool, cool colored because he doesn't feel like he needs to show himself more. I don't know. He's like cloaking um, himself in the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're better that. than this. I, mean, <laughs> I can do the drawing parts. No, no, it you comes across. I love that. <laughs> okay. Um, Oakley is wearing her her work clothes, which I wanted to have those nice uh, earthy colors, pipe colors, copper, and uh, protective, um, protective, reflective 
what they're called. That, you know, the, uh, the security tape. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically her, her uh, setup for now. Um, Very sturdy. Yes. And who is with? Oh, Thorn. Thorn is basically. It's also work clothes because his that his father also wears wears the same shirt. So he wears like the gardener's clothes for the castle in this book. So his top is that. And with Yorick, it was basically just going out and having fun with some cool, stylish, you know, walking down the cat. Um, why am I not forgetting? Why am I forgetting the word? The word? Walkway? Catwalk. No, cat, catwalk. It was catwalk. It just didn't feel right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He's, like, yeah. So he's high fashion. He's got his earrings. He's got his nice, cool cape. He's got his cool little um, sweater. He's soft he's shoes. <laughs> yeah, he's he's cool about it. But he's also droopy as a character and melancholic. So he's, you know, dark and mysterious. He can't, yeah, he's dark <laughs> and mysterious. So James, do you want to take it? Actually, we could talk about the Bandage Man because he went through a few iterations. I think the, I, the first iterations I had with the Bandage Man was more of a lanky, uh, mysterious guy. Like the Bandage War is there, of course, but his clothes would be more as like, just like a creepy dude, basically. But then James wanted his presence to be seen as he would stand out. So that's how we got to a more bulkier big guy with a huge sword. And I think I'll leave that till there, leave that there because we want mystery with this character. It's true. Big secret villain. <laughs> James, did you want to add anything to that in terms of characters? Uh, I mean, I think Michael Car covered a lot of it, this really well. I mean, this was something that um, you know, just because there were iterations in my head going all the way back to when I was, you know, 15 years old, I honestly didn't want to dictate too much the, the physical look of the characters, um, you know, just because, I mean, Michael might feel differently than that, but uh, I think that... Uh, <laughs> I need to see these pitches at some point. I've never yeah, seen I these. Need to find, I need to dig them out of school. Oh, space. yes, please. <laughs> Uh, but it, but honestly, this was a, uh, you know, I, I knew, I knew the general feel of each of the characters that, that I wanted to impart. I knew that, uh, Wind was a small character, a little unassuming, uh, someone who you'd want to, like, pick up and put in your pocket. Uh, I knew that Oakley was a, a bigger, brassier personality, someone not afraid to, you know, be rude or be, you know, say whatever comes to the top of her mind. Um, and I knew that, you know, uh, Yorick was definitely a very depressed character who, uh, you know, takes that out on the people around him, but is someone who's, you know, like really guided by fear. Uh, and then Thorne is sort of like the big, you know, great Dane of the cast. He is the, like, he's kind of the jock, but he's the, he has protective instincts and I, he wants to, he wants to help everyone around him. And, you know, he doesn't fully, he's not necessarily the smartest character, but he's also, but he, he means the most well. So it was something that I, I knew the hearts of each of the characters that I wanted to impart. And then we started talking about it. And honestly, the, the conversation about the size of the bandage man, uh, also then factored into the size of Thorne himself because, you know, Thorne is a big muscular character, but I, it, we, you know, we needed to find the balance of, you know, this is still a teenager uh, and we need, like, we needed the adults to still look like adults versus these teenage characters. And I think that that's part of why uh, Bandaged Man became a bit larger than life because he needed to be scary to each of them. It couldn't look like Thorn could pick him up and snap him in half. He could take him in a fight, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. We've dived a little bit into the heart of the characters. Let's get into the plot itself. Uh, there's this theme of otherness throughout Wind. We've got the people who have magic 
and the people who are afraid of it or hate it or simply don't understand it. Why was this theme so important to the story and to you to include in it? I mean, this definitely comes from being a out queer teenager in, you know, my, my high school uh, and living in a world where I felt like another. Uh, this was something, and this was right when I was dealing with, you know, like, it, I, I wasn't out to my parents yet, uh, but I was out to my close friends. I wasn't sure what my future would look like. I didn't know, uh, you know, what my place in the world would be. And, you know, and, and fiction wasn't a great guide to that because the stories that I loved, I didn't see myself reflected in. Uh, and that was something that was part of why I wanted to create my own stories. And I wanted to, you know, my, my plan was, it's just like, okay, I want to do a story in each of the main genres that I love as a 15 year old. And I'm going to put myself in each of those stories. And just because I, those stories don't exist. So, you know, that's honestly still what I'm doing, <laughs> uh, like as a, as a, my career path. But honestly, this is, uh, that, that was the root of it. And uh, this was something that, you know, magic, the way magic works in this world is it's basically the core idea that the, the natural world, the world outside uh, your door, it can reach inside you and twist you and change you. And that is terrifying to people who have always kept the, the world out there. But it's also, the, it's also just what happens as a natural course of growing up. When you go out into the world and the world changes you. And that's, purely, that's very natural. Everyone changes, everyone grows. Uh, so the, to really embody the, that fear uh, of being changed and knowing there's something already a little different about you uh, and being afraid of going out into the world and letting, and letting yourself become something that you aren't sure what that final state's going to be. Like that, and that's part of why the, the, the story starts in Nightmare, because Wind is terrified of what is the end goal of all, all of this magic in his blood? What will the adult Wind look like? Will it be this horrifying monster who even his closest friends and the people he cares about can't even look at? And that's something that I think that, you know, young queer people understand very well. And that's, that is the heart of the, of the book and of Wind, of the, you know, long form series that we're doing here. That's fantastic. Uh, Michael, did you want to add anything? I yield my time to James. Beautiful. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up. We've got kind of a fun question here. Uh, you can pick any character in the series. Which of them is the one who's going to get you into trouble and which one is going to get you back out of it? Let's start with Michael this time. Oh, God. You better not have stolen I... <laughs> Put you on the Look, spot. <laughs> I got this email before going to bed. And when I woke up, I was still thinking about this. I still haven't figured it out. You're just lying there it thinking of it. <laughs> it's like, who is it? Who is going to get me into trouble? I've come down to Oakley for both answers. That she will get me into trouble. <laughs> exact answer. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. There you go. Oakley, she I, will get you into trouble and she will help you out after. I, yeah, I guess no, it's, that, it's, that is the heart of that character. Like Oakley is the, you know, the kind of big sister character who's going to make fun of you and push you and prod you into a place that you're uncomfortable with. And you're going to go out there and you're going to get in trouble. But also when things get really serious, she is going to put her serious face on and she's going to take care of business. Sounds like the best kind of friend to have. Someone you can do mischief, but also you got to be able to fix that mischief afterwards. That's fantastic. I'm, well, I'm super ahead. glad that we agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. True collaborators here. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for joining us today. Uh, everyone, you can pick up Win Number One in comic shops right now. It's in stores. Go get it. Uh, be sure to shop local. And thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one, guys.